<laughs> Talk to me about some of the neighborhoods that are in North Hollywood. In North, in the city of North Hollywood itself, there is a actually quite a bit of neighborhoods. The let's say the most known ones that you would know out of LA would be uh, Clanton, 14th Street, which we we've always had a very uh, good and close relationship, with, and we still do to this day. That's probably we we probably have one of the longest uh, gang uh, not truces, but that we work together with because we have a lot of family members that are that are from Clanton. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, when uh one of the OGs from out here uh, is my homeboy. I mean, my homeboy, my brother-in-law, uh, my brother-in-law from Clanton, Chico from Clant. He's uh he's about 52, 53 years old. So mm-hmm. we got Clanton, we got North Hollywood boys, which is us. We got North Hollywood locals, which is another neighborhood we don't get along with. We got Radford Street, we don't get along with. We got boys from the hood, we don't get along with. Another well-known LA gang is uh Northside 18th Street, we don't get along with. Uh, MS, we don't get along with. Hey, locals, we didn't get along with. Boys from the hood, we didn't get along with. And that's that's just in our city. So that's about nine, nine, ten gangs. And I'm sure there's one or two that I'm missing out of that, just just in our city itself. So you got to remember, uh, I mean, North Hollywood's a basic LA city. No, it's not. I think it's maybe a population of 100,000 or something. But out of this whole city, every single one of those gangs that I just mentioned in the 90s had a minimum of 40 to 50 members on the very, very low side. And on the high side, you can go to somebody's neighborhood one time and you'll find 80 to 120 people kicking it out there, man. So it was yeah. it was <clears throat> definitely a war zone out here. Mm. And what, what is your hood specifically? I, I'm, I'm uh, from North Hollywood, boys. And when did they come to present in North Hollywood? Well, I, act, I actually know very well because one of my brother-in-laws is one of the original from the neighborhoods. They started, mm. they started around... Uh, I think they started playing football on 83. They used to be a football team. A lot of neighbors out here in the Valley were football teams. And they would go, they actually would go play against, uh, against actual gangs. They would play with gangs that, that were already established and been around for a long time. And, uh, when they would go play, they would say, who are these guys? These are, these are the, the fucking, the boys from Hollywood, you know? And, uh, eventually around 84, the homies got together. Like, you know what? Fuck this dude. Let's, Let's uh let's uh let's make a gang, and it's a, it's the beginning of a gang. And these guys started coming out with names, and actually they almost called it Vineland Boys, which is kind of ironic because that's one of our biggest rivals. And uh, mm. they the homies ended up saying, you know what? All right, we're gonna play a football game. So they played a football game amongst themselves, and uh, lo and behold, uh, the guys who wanted to know Hollywood Boys got it in HBZ, and that's how we got our name. So that was about mm. about eight, eighty yeah about eighty four I would say, and then by. Uh, by 84, then you had about 86. Most of those guys that actually started the neighborhood, most of them went out to live normal lives, dude. Most of those guys mm. did not did not foresee the gang becoming what they have. And some of those guys, unfortunately, their brothers have died. Their sons are have drug problems. They're, uh, they're uh, I mean, a lot of those original guys, we have issues because it became generational. Now we got, we got, I got, kids that I knew when they were babies, they were born. I mean, I was in the hood before they were born and now they're from the hood. You know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that it's, it's a, it's a cycle, man. It's a cycle that's getting smaller and slower, but, but that's what it is. Dusty. Now here's a story I found interesting and I specifically skipped ahead when I was watching this video on your channel because I wanted to, you know, hear it first on my show with my own ears, but your okay. brother shot you, your brother shot you so you wouldn't catch a murder case. <laughs> yeah true story brother it's funny because uh some people will sit there and say no you're this you're that you're lying i still hang out with two guys that were there and that's what they laugh <laughs> about it, like dude so so this is what happened man. so we're uh when it was it this was uh this was actually this was 1991 this was a uh, one week before i got arrested for my for the shooting i got arrested for so that'll tell you how how, how active how many shootings there was every week so we're, we're, we're rolling, we're rolling up to this place. Um, there was no park, you know, it was like one of those, uh, where the water towers are at every, like every kind of city has them way in the outskirts of the city by the hill. And, and there was a party that was over. We, everybody said, go to the tower. So what, what do these people do? They go to the tower, drink their beers, smoke their weed, try to pick up some girls. So we went up to, there was no parking. I dropped off, I dropped off my brother and two other homies up there. I told him. I'm gonna go park at the bottom. They said, "All right, no problem." I go, I park, I park at the bottom, 
I leave my gun in the car. Because we all had guns. I, I go up. I go up. Actually, it was three homies and my brother. I go up, and uh, I see this one guy that we've been trying to get at, that we, that we, had, a, that we had a shooting with a week before. So I'm telling you, every week there's a shooting, brother. We had a shooting a week before. I said, oh, there's that motherfucker. And as I say that, a big old melee fight starts happening, right? At this point, one of my other homies got a gun. He pulls it out. He puts it to this guy's head. Click, click, click. The fucking pin went out. Uh, shit happens like that all the time. I don't know if it's God or or destiny or what it is, brother. The the gun's clicking. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not going off. I'm over here. My brother. There's, there's a big ass crowd. So my brother gets his gun and boom, boom, takes one or two shots up in the air to try to disperse the crowd. This guy's about I don't know maybe five seven feet from me. My brother's about I don't know another maybe four or five seven feet to the behind me. I see him. I see his gun. I said, "Oh, bro, give me that strap. I'm gonna kill this motherfucker." That's exactly what my words. I'm because I'm like, in, in those things, that's what you want to do, or you think you want to do. I'm gonna kill this guy in front of everybody. I don't give a fuck. That's the mentality, brother. So, so I go to get the, I go to get the gun. Boom! The gun goes off on my left hand. It goes, it goes through me. It hits my my home, one of my homeboys in the arm. It hits another fellow that we know in the face. So you got three guys. Getting shot. All right, we we go we go to the hospital. My fucking arms all all wrapped up. I go in there. I'm a little buzzed by this time. They start asking me for insurance. This and that. I'm like, I got no fucking insurance, man. The lady said, Well, you got to go to some hospital or something happened. I said, You know what? Fuck this. I'm gone. I'm back at the house. At the mother house that we that, we, that my homie that my homie owns or some beat up ass place in the alley. Uh, and we're partying over there, brother. So after. After the whole shooting happens, we're back over here partying. My hand is looks like a like a like a like a grapefruit. I go to I go to the mirror. I'm like I, I open it up. I think we went to like thrifties or something. Picked up some alcohol, some swabs, and some 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 ace bandage. I go to the mm. I go to the, the the bathroom. I squeeze it, brother. I push you not. It came out like a squirt. It just ah. went over. It went, <laughs> it went into the sink, but it went up. It like a I said, oh shit. I squirted it, it hit the sink, I put alcohol, I wrapped it up, and it was just swollen like that. The ironic part was that the next week when I got arrested for that shooting, the only reason I got convicted was because I had gunpowder. And where was the gunpowder? It was in my fucking left hand because of the gunshot. <laughs> but then when we're when we're at the when we're at the when we're at the party, to get back to the story real quick, I uh I tell my I forgot we we're talking to my brother. I said, "Damn, Dick, what the fuck, man? You shot me. Uh, you shot me uh, by mistake. What the fuck?" He's like, "Nah, cabron. That's my brother. He's called me, cabron." He's like, "Nah, cabron. I saw it in your eyes, fool. You're gonna kill that fool." So I'm like, "No, I ain't giving you this gun." So that's when, he, when I grabbed it. Boom! It pulled off. And he shot me in the head, man. But if my brother wouldn't have held onto the gun, wouldn't have shot me, I would have killed that guy, man. There's, there's, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. And guys that were there, no for a fact, I would have killed him like nothing. And who knows? I, I, I would right now. I would probably just be getting out of prison if I would have been that lucky. 